Hi, welcome to the Frugal Frau with Suki, your host. Today we're going to use two meals using the leftover ingredients from the potato and parsnip paprikash au gratin. Well, you know, there's no time like the present. So since I have all these ingredients left over from the parsnip and potato casserole, I'm going to just go ahead and do all my prep work for the breakfast in the morning. So I have two cloves of garlic. I have two onions, a tiny bit of leftover parsnip and potatoes. And I went ahead and rehydrated the very last of the 2022 dehydrated tomatoes because they needed to get used up. So now I can work on 2023. So it's always good because you want to cycle through your pantry. All right, good morning. I have the leftovers from the parsnip and potato casserole or parsnip and potato au gratin. And I'm going to use these as part of our breakfast this morning. I'm just gonna fry all this stuff up. And while I was at it, I, it was time for me to mix up my bread. And I make bread about once a month or maybe once every five weeks because we don't eat a lot, and I have the remainder of that rising here. It is a four-day ferment, no yeast. And this is also uh, fermented, but just overnight, because I only used a portion of the four-day ferment from the two loaves. And so that's ready to go in the oven. I used corn masa mainly, and oat, and rye, and uh, we had ground up some parched corn, and I put that in there, and boy, does that have a great smell. So here it is, and it's going to go in the oven right now because the oven is now hot enough. And that can cook while I'm doing the rest of the breakfast. So we should hear a nice sizzle. Oh, great. Whatever I don't use in this frittata, I'm probably going to just dump into a big batch of soup at some point. So I can put this little bit in the small freezer that we have. And then when I get enough, I can make a big pot of soup using one of the broths or add it to one of the soups I have from the canning cupboard. All right, that's all I'm going to add. So I will have some left over for soup, so that's great. Now, I already mixed up eight eggs from the lovely girls that we have. And I'm uh, not putting that on there because it's too hot. And I use my old trusty egg beater, which I've had for nearly 40 years. It was gifted to me, and I've never seen an egg better beater that was as robust as this one. And it's just my go-to. It makes perfectly uh, white, white eggs when I want, not white eggs, but uh, beaten whites when I want them just to that nice fluffy stage. It never overbeats it because uh, you have total control when you're spinning this around. Anyways, it's just a, a great tool. I'll never give that up. Although I have a niece that might want that so I'll have to make sure she gets that before I pass on from this world. And that's okay. And I gotta keep stirring these a little bit. While the oven was heating, I got the water done. We already have our coffee and tea. I like to use our metal mugs and pots in the winter time when I have the stove going because one doesn't dare put the ceramic mugs or the ceramic pots on top of the stove top unless one wants to break them, which I don't want to do. And after that cornbread comes out of the oven, I will simply uh, adjust the heat of the wood stove in case I need to by either adding more wood, which I'll probably have to add, and then I'm going to try to keep it at a pretty constant temperature for the bread. So I'll need about 375 to 400 for that. And my bread is a rather dense, gluten-free bread. It's more like the German Vollkornbrot, which is, gets sliced up in very, very thin slices, and I do the same thing when I make my bread. It's primarily gluten-free, although I have to admit I use rye flour now because rye doesn't seem to bother me, 
or my husband, and we have given up wheat a long time ago because we just had too many digestive issues from it. So I do it gluten-free, and no, it's never going to rise and get that nice airy texture, but that's a trade-off. But I get this heavy, dense, stick-to-your-ribs type of bread, which I usually uh, put caraway seeds in it because I actually love caraway. And next year, caraway is on my list to add to my herb garden. I've never grown it before. It should grow just fine here, and I may even be able to keep it as a perennial. I'll see or at least be able to get it to go to seed and save the seeds. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm just going to let this get nice and fully cooked before I add the eggs, stirring it so that it does not burn on the bottom. And then at the end, I'll take that cornbread out of the oven, because it only takes about 20 minutes, 25 minutes. I will put grated cheese on top of this, and then I'll pop this in the oven so that the cheese melts. And then we have a really nice breakfast, and this will probably last us three days. By the time I get eight eggs in here, and then it turns it into a, like a quicheless or crustless quiche, or frittata, however you want to look at that. And it'll be quite tasty. And then we get a, a good portion of vegetables to have at breakfast time, and I'll see you when that's all done. All right, my vegetables are fully cooked, and I've had to put it on the trivet because I had the oven going pretty high in order to get the oven temperature up for my bread, and I've cracked the oven a little bit so I don't burn my bread. And I'm giving my eggs final spin with the egg beater, pouring eight eggs, to which I've added a little bit of, of course, raw milk. A2 raw milk, which we get locally. We're fortunate to have a source for that. And I want to spread that top out like this. I already have my cheese grated, but I won't put that in until these eggs are set. So I'm going to leave the eggs to cook for a little bit. They don't take very long. Okay, I'm going to check my bread and see if it's ready. And it looks ready on top. Sounds ready. I'm going to set this aside to cool and then I'm going to pop my two loaves in there now that I've put the temperature, no actually I'm not going to put my two loaves in there, I'll, they can wait. Uh, I'm going to wait for these eggs to set, set this aside to cool and to settle, and we're going to have that nice beautiful sourdough cornbread with our breakfast this morning. All right, I think I can take my frittata out of the oven, and it looks great. Cheese is all melted, it's bubbling up the sides, and as long as I have that door open, I'm going to pop in my loaves of bread. Check my oven temperature, and I'm going to have to open that up for a little bit. There. So while this sets and the bread cooks, uh, we're going to set the table the rest of the way, and. Then we're going to enjoy our breakfast, so I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. After attending to a few of the chores, well, it's time to add some more wood to the firebox so that I can get on with using the rest of my leftovers to cook the lentil recipe because I do have a guest coming over for Dunch. And I think I said this before, Dunch is kind of a two to three o'clock in the afternoon meal for us and my guest is just fine with that today. 
but now it's time to get started on the red lentil recipe for my vegetarian friends. I've already got the coconut oil melted in my heavy bodied three quart pot here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is dump my onions in and get them browning up. And I've also ch already chopped up fresh garlic from the root cellar. And in this recipe, I'm going to add black mustard because that's traditional in a lot of Indian dishes. And I'm using up the little bit of paprikash seasoning mixture that I had because otherwise it just sits there and it gets lost in the spice cupboard. And to it, I added plenty of cumin, plenty of curry, a little bit of coriander, and uh, a little bit of cardamom. Now, I might, after I taste this, I might add a little bit of cinnamon or allspice to it, too. And uh, then I'll add the lentils, the red lentils, which I've already rinsed, followed with water. And after that cooks down a bit, when it's pretty much all the way cooked, then I will add the uh, creme fraiche that I need to use up right at the end, and that makes a complete meal. Now, I've, I looked at a few recipes of different curries online, and as is my traditional mode of cooking, everything's just a guide. So some people have added a sweetener to this curry, and I might add just a touch of maple syrup because, well, we have maple syrup in our house since we have a lot of sugar bush. So that might get added to it. And then I'll have the curry dish done. And uh, I still have plenty of parsnip and potato and onion mixture. So I am considering just frying that up with a slightly more savory type curry because this is going to be more of a sweet curry and I might make it a little spicier and hotter and then that will be part of my vegetarian meal too so I'm real happy to do that so we'll have all these different things we'll have the creme fraiche <laughs> used in three different dishes all right these are just slowly cooking I have the bottom airflow of the stove cranked open my sleeves rolled up because it's kind of warm over here in this corner. But that's okay. It is now snowing outside and the temperatures are dropping. But since I cook breakfast pretty much every morning on the wood stove, I'm not going to waste the heat that I've already built up for cooking. And we have plenty of leftovers for dinner, so I simply have to set them out on the warming shelf before we eat our, our main meal of the day. When it's just the two of us, we typically eat our main meal between 2 and 3 o'clock. I call it dunch. And then we don't really eat dinner. We seem to function better that way. Now, if you have children, that's probably not a good option because they're probably going to get hungry and need something to eat. And, but we're older adults, so this works for us. These are slowly browning. Not quite there yet. But I want to let them go before I add the garlic because garlic wants to burn right away. But I could add my black mustard seed. So, in my typical manner of measurement, oh, that's about a tablespoon. Maybe a little bit more. So, there. And I'll let them go and start popping. Then I'll quickly put the garlic in there and saute that. Then water. And then two cups of red lentils. So it'll be approximately three and a half cups of water. This is a three-quart pan. So this 
will be plenty large enough for what I'm doing. And because this will have that nice red orange color, I'm going to serve it in one of my dark blue serving bowls with the uh, terracotta rim. I know that sounds all silly and everything, but it's a nice color combination, the blue with terracotta. My seeds are just starting to pop a little bit. And I would like to let them go a little bit longer. So I like cooking like this where I either discover or invent recipes to use with the leftovers from a previous recipe. And that way I don't have lots of miscellaneous leftovers collecting in the refrigerator where they might get lost and never get used and thus wasted, but I don't want to waste anything here. All right, I can add my garlic. Of course, it smells delightful. Right. Now I'm going to add a little bit of water. And that's just so I don't burn my herby herb mixture here. I'm dumping the whole thing in. There. Looks like a lot of herbs, but for this amount of lentils, it's really not that much. All right, I'm going to let that cook down just a little bit before I add more water and lentils. All right, that's thickened up. So in order to prevent this from burning, I need to add water right now. All right, I'm going to add my scant two cups of well-rinsed lentils. They're kind of congealed together here, but I'll break them up. And of course, these don't take very long to cook. I'm simply going to bring this to a boil and I'm going to tamp the airflow down at the bottom of the stove because I don't need a full flame to keep these cooking. And I'll probably transfer them to the trivet. And that will keep them from burning. And of course, I'll keep an eye on it. That's well mixed. I'm going to add a little bit more water. Now I want these to cook up fairly thickly. If I cook them slow, I can really control the amount of moisture that I end up with. And that way, when I pour the creme fraiche in there, which I don't really want to boil or cook too much, because it'll separate then I can still have a nice texture without it being too liquid. So. I gotta get the little stray lentil off of there. I missed. Oh well, I'll pick it up later. All right, so once I bring this to a boil, I'm 
and I'm going to dampen the bottom and put this on a trivet. And then this will make a beautiful lentil dish, which I will demonstrate or show when it's all done. So I'll see you after it gets all cooked. Okay, my lentils have lost quite a bit of the moisture. Off camera, I actually added half a tablespoon of cinnamon, another tablespoon of cumin, and another tablespoon of curry. Because after I tasted it, it seemed to need a little bit more. And then I had a little tiny bit of uh, dehydrated carrots. And since they're orange, and this is kind of an orange dish, I added those and they have rehydrated nicely in there. So I'm just going to add my cream. Mix it in. And I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit longer to let those flavors meld together. So this is quite a rich and creamy dish. And uh, I decided to make some changes to the entire menu off camera. So I actually cooked rice because I did have rice from Azure Standard. So I'm serving this with rice a cabbage salad because again this is going to be kind of a rich and creamy and heavy meal and so I just made a simple cabbage salad with a vinaigrette and then I made a raita but I didn't have any cucumbers which is traditional in a yogurt based raita so what I did I did a little experiment now I did it in a very small scale off camera just to test it. As you know, if you've watched my earlier videos, I have way too many ferments. So I took some cabbage ferment, because that's mostly what I have. I rinsed it very, very well. Then I mixed it with a little bit of yogurt. And then I mixed it with cranberries. That gave it a nice color. And it gave it just a slight sweetness and a coolness. And I put that in a bowl. And I put on top of that my candied orange and lemon peel. Because the zestiness will be a nice complement to this meal. This is actually not that sweet. I tasted it. And it's quite savory. So I'm going to let this simmer a little bit longer on the stove. And then I'll put it in the serving dishes and I'll show you what that looks like afterwards.